Hello and welcome to Torch Hours. This is part two of the La Cloche Silhouette Trail in Killarney. In this episode, in this episode, we are going to, I'm going to share days four to seven, which are the last four days of our hike up. Hello. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the episode. I had a viewer comment about why we book two sites per night. I did explain this in the first part of the Killarney La Cloche Silhouette video, but in case you missed it, this is because our party exceeded six. We ended up being a party of seven. It's the maximum amount of campers per site that the park will permit is six. And because we have to register every hiker, we had to book two sites and we did try to book, of course, the sites closest to each other. I think this is a good time to mention November 13th, there was breaking news about a rescued hiker in Killarney. The OPP rescued an experienced hiker on the trail who was planning an eight day hike and didn't make it out on his booked last day. It took several days, I understand, by helicopter to locate this hiker and they seem to be okay. Um, they were taken to hospital for minor injuries and just out of precaution. It's simply a reminder that this is a pretty serious trail. No matter what experience level you have while hiking, I'm a huge advocate for hiking with a buddy. Now let's get into the hike. It's so hard to believe that we embarked on this hike a month ago. We are so thankful for the weather that we had during this hike because it made all the difference. And every day that we hiked, the weather improved more and more. We were wearing shorts. Uh, some of us went swimming. On day four, this was October the 18th, we hiked approximately 12 kilometers. We were hiking from campsite H22, which overlooked a large pond and was punctuated with quartzite rocks, which was just lovely. We continued on. We picked up the rest of the group at the H23 campsite, which was down by a creek. And then we carried on our day, making our way to H34 on David Lake. It's Friday, day four. Day four. four. Yeah. Woo. We've just started. Came down a pretty steep area and have many more ahead of us. Oh, we're conquering the mountain section. Excellent. Oh, you can't tell, but we came from way down in a deep valley. And hopefully there's a really good view for all this work up here. Like every morning, we got up at 6 a.m. and we were rewarded when we began our hike and eventually got to some elevation. We were able to see these lakes with the morning mist rising off the lakes and it was just breathtaking. Oh, wow. Oh guys, if you come here, the view of the trees too, with all the color. This day really presented us with view after view. As one hiker described it, it is like being inside a group of seven paintings the whole way.
At some point along the trail around campsite H31, we came across a group of men that were going in the opposite direction. They asked us if they were close to their campsite. And then we asked them in return if we were close to H34. They said that they had just come from there and that it was an extremely private site. Once we got to the trailhead marker for H34, we soon learned what very private meant in trail talk. It meant the side trail from the main path is quite arduous and long. This pretty much guaranteed that no hiker was going to stray off the trail to check out this campsite. Okay. Yeah. Is it a grouse? Yeah. It's a grouse. Down on this. No, we don't see you. We don't, if you don't move, we don't see you. No. <laughs> you want to go ahead? Oh, there. There you go. Now he's up on the ridge. <laughs> the quartzite terrain in this area started to get really um, like undulating. You'll see here in the next clip. And it just felt like I was in this really wild skate park. The biggest cairn. It was also on this day where the rock cairns became regular blazes. So this is because there was fewer trees for the blue markers to be pinned onto. We have arrived at David Lake. Our campsite is somewhere on this. From the main trail, we're third of the way to the camp. David Lake is a large lake that is part of the portage system. Here we saw a little bit of civilization. There seemed to be a couple of cabins that even had lights on. I don't know if these were on automatic timers or solar. And we had uh, two ladies in a canoe pass us on their way back to their campsite around the corner they had paddled to a point where they could leave their canoe and hike up to silver peak Again, the site at David Lake did not give us much sunlight in the afternoon, 
But when the sun set, we had beautiful lighting across the lake and we were able to see a beautiful moon rise. On day five, we woke up to a relatively warm morning, again at 6 a.m., and we got to watch a stunning sunrise as we got ready for the day. We traveled approximately 11 kilometers on this day, going from our campsite at David Lake to our campsite at Bunny Rabbit Lake, which was H45. Is this Boundary Lake? Oh wow, the moon. It's lovely. The sun. The direction of our next bit of the trail. Is the trail there? Look like uh, the, one of those infinity pools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, on the other side. What? <laughs> <laughs> we debated about taking an excursion to climb Silver Peak. We decided in the end not to do that. This was because we thought we would get a little bit of sunlight at our campsite at Bunny Rabbit Lake and a few of us really wanted to go swimming. And because four of our members had already done that hike and we thought for those who wanted to return, they could and they could just do the, the Silver Peak hike. Walking the red carpet towards Silver Lake. Shortly after passing the Silver Peak turnoff, we came across the most darling little waterfall that looked perfectly landscaped, like you couldn't have designed a better waterfall for your garden. If <laughs> Isn't this like the best? Mm. Look at that through here, guys. It's also magnificent. Rabbit Lake. Oh, 
This was a day where we did not cross paths with a single hiker or canoeing party. While we were hanging out by the lake, we did hear some hikers pass by. I think they were going in the opposite direction, but I could hear the echoes of the hikers off of the pass. The only animal that we witnessed here was a bald eagle that kept circling the area. We indeed had some sunlight exposure at this campsite down by the water. And because of this, a couple people went swimming. I definitely rinsed off and rinsed my hair and it felt really amazing. I can't even tell you. And then we could just sit in the sun, warm up, dry off and relax. It was really, really nice. Campsite for our day five is on Little Rabbit Lake or Little Bunny Lake. I woke quite early in the morning to a big splash, followed a little bit later by another big splash. And I think it might have been a moose that was swimming across part of that lake. Day six was our shortest hiking day of only six kilometers. And this really came down to wanting to end our last day of hiking on day seven with the crack. This left us with really being only able to book Prue Lake and Little Superior Lake because those were the two sites closest to the crack. Day six, we just did our first ascent. Can't really see how high we climbed, but here we are. Not long after we started our hiking on day six, we came across a beautiful campsite at Heaven Lake. And I think the only reason we couldn't book that for the previous night is that it didn't allow for six um, for six hikers, but it also wasn't close to any of the other campsites, so we would have been too spread apart from each other. Here we are at Heaven Lake. It looks quite heavenly. A really lovely looking campsite over here. Future thoughts. Possibly our highest peak of the day. There is a high level little lake here. We're just gonna go up there and then we're gonna start heading down. You really know that you have built up your endurance and strength when you can do the mountain pose on a rock with a 40 pound backpack on your back. Another perk of having such lovely weather were the clear skies and this allowed us to see all the way to Manitoulin Island from one of the peaks that we were able to climb that day. That's what I thought was the uh... Over there, see in the distance? It is the escarpment. 
Yeah, it's the biggest yeah. carpet in this yeah. distance. Yeah. That is yeah. so cool. What is it? Manitoulin Island. I'd say that this day was probably our most colorful day. The fall colors were at their peak. We're gonna be staying down here today. The waters of Prue Lake and Little Superior Lake were the deepest of blues. Little Superior Lake. Because it was such a short day, we were able to make the most of our day once we got into the campsite and just relax. After all, this was our vacation. We had the sun, some of us went swimming, some of us kind of rinsed ourselves off if they didn't go completely into the water. And there were some other hikers that actually came and did much the same just down the ways from us because it was that kind of day. I'm documenting. You got it? It's gold. We finally were facing in the right direction to catch our last glimpse of that 80,000 year old comet. And it wasn't as bright as it had been the first night. I don't know if that was because it was fading or because we didn't have the full moon any longer, but it was still beautiful. And watching all the stars were gorgeous. We even saw some shooting stars that night. This was probably my favorite evening where we were all relaxed from the chill day. We, a whole bunch of us lay down on the rocks near the water and the campfire and we just stargazed. On our last day, we woke up at six o'clock like every other day, but this time instead of taking two and a half to two hours and 45 minutes to get ready, we were motivated and were able to get out by eight o'clock sharp. And this was because this was our day to go to the crack. Day seven on Little Superior Lake. All right, everyone is ready. Yeah. Let's go. Last hiking out. We're done. <laughs> I think it's just begun. Yeah. <laughs> the corner where no one can smell us. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, you are a biggie, aren't yeah. you? Gorgeous. Oh, wow. I know. Yeah. Little Superior, we just climbed up there and that's where the great view was. We're going around the lake. I unfortunately got Hanny's ungraceful moment of dropping his balls. <sighs> Hello. Great. There he is. Are you just? Having a morning stroll. They're so camouflaged. We made it to the crack in excellent time and to our luck, we were the first ones and the only ones there. So we had the whole area to ourselves. I didn't know what to expect, so I didn't know what a big deal this was. But I soon figured it out because as we descended, just as we were about midway or close to the bottom, we saw a group of hikers. And after that, it just seemed like we were pa crossing paths with one hiker after another, after another. And then we came across a large school group because it was Monday now. That one? That jack pine? Mm, I think it's a white pine, no? This little, this tree is the single most photographed tree? Yeah. Wow. By far. The crack was a challenge. I think it wasn't quite as challenging as that first crack that I mentioned. I think that was on our second or third day, but it was still challenging. And with the 40 pound pack on your back and it being so bulky, that also made it challenging. There was one point where I thought I was because the bulk of my pack and the rock was positioned in such a way, I thought it was going to push me right off a big boulder and it would not have been a nice landing, but I was able to kind of rebalance and um, get down there safely. Interview. How I almost propelled myself off the cliff, but I did it. <laughs> 
With the main attraction now behind us, we still had seven kilometers to go. This is because we parked at George Lake in the park instead of the uh, crack parking lot. If you park in the crack parking lot, I believe it's only about a two kilometer hike from there to the crack. Where we came from, from the crack. Maybe a seniors group congratulated us. They could tell that we had done the whole silhouette trail with our big packs, and they told us that uh, that was a really big achievement, which, of course, we weren't expecting, but it really did feel quite nice to hear that. <laughs> Falling leaves Classic. and very nice shot from here. With the vistas behind us, I really wasn't expecting much for the next seven kilometers, but there were still some beautiful gems to be seen along the way. We came across a beautiful kind of lake pond with a beaver dam and we had to cross the beaver dam, which is always exciting. We then also got another view up over um, a couple of other lakes, not too far from George Lake. I think George Lake was actually in the background, but that was really pretty as well. It looks rather boggy for a lake, doesn't it? Yeah. The adventure is not over yet. Yeah. Beaver Dam Crossing. <laughs> I look like a turtle. I look like a turtle with the four legs. Turtle with four legs, turtle. <laughs> Uh, maybe. The home stretch to the car. Balmy day. Hey, George Lake. Oh, you can come to our trash here. Oh my gosh, we can see our cars. By the time we got to our car, it was at least 20 degrees out and we were hot. So a bunch of us tossed off our packs and stripped down to something that was swimsuit viable and took a plunge in George Lake. We were hoping to be able to use the camp showers, but they actually closed those on the Thursday um, of the previous week for the season. So we weren't left with any other option but the lake. But you know what? It was way more fun, I think, than just taking a shower. Oh, Thank look at you. you. Yay, again. Woo! <laughs> 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 
We knew we would have quite a drive back to the city and opted to stop at the Hungry Bear on the way back. We were able to have milkshakes and burgers. At least that's what I had. To honor our big achievement and to fuel us for the long drive home. To end this episode, I think it's worthy to acknowledge that I felt, and I think some of the other hikers felt, sort of this bizarre feeling when we got home. Obviously, it was a relief to get home, but turning on the lights and using electricity and having all of these conveniences and then the noises of the city, it definitely took some adjusting um, after being away from all of these things. In this busy day and age, this is a really nice thing to do for yourself. It's just to get away from it all, to get away from cell phone use and all of those things that create noise figuratively and literally in our lives. Thanks again for watching. Your viewership really does mean so much to me. If you have any questions about this hike or other hikes, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. I'd be happy to answer those. You can also do so on my Instagram account, which is at Torch Hours. Otherwise, I'll see you on the trails.